Welcome back. It is 544 right now. From the latest farming machinery to recent research findings, all things ag are on display at the Wisconsin Farm Technology Days. And the event annually, it's 61 years now, kicks off today in Sun Prairie. With us again from the show is the fabulous farm babe herself, Pam Yonke. Good morning, Pam. Good morning. It is a good morning to Adam and Charlotte out here at Stotts Farms just outside of Sun Prairie towards the Marshall area. Uh, the tent city is starting to come alive and you are going to see a lot of fantastic technology, whether it's the farm equipment that's out in the fields doing our live demonstrations or whether it's some of the technology that's software driven, GPS driven. It's all going to be here, like you said earlier, about 600 exhibitors that are covering about 85 acres with our tillage demonstrations uh, included. And I got two young friends of mine that are going to be catching a lot of attention here uh, we have uh, DMZ Ariel who is uh, the Feeney boys here my friend Mitch Feeney is one of the co-founders of DMZ Ariel tell me what this is and why it's such uh, chatter here at Tent City right so we use UAV systems to do crop scouting basically general analytics that allow us to find problem areas in the field such as nutrient deficiencies mm -hmm. disease insect pressure all these problems that farmers are looking to find so we can make management decisions he says uav unmanned aerial vehicles some people call them drones we're trying to be sophisticated here at farm tech days but <laughs> you'll get the idea so exactly how specific how precise can this be for a farmer Absolutely. So our GPSs are accurate well beyond the point where we can actually get sub-inch accuracy, which allows us to map out a field and zoom in to leaf tissue mm -hmm. from 40, 50, all the way up to 400 feet in the air. How, how quickly is this technology advancing? Extremely fast. You talk about Moore's Law, about every three months this technology is just doubling in speed and capabilities. Mm -hmm. And how are farmers reacting to it? Same way they always do, a little suspicious at first, but you're seeing those early innovators purchasing the systems, utilizing them, seeing what we can use them for, testing them out, and now we're seeing that late majority kind of come in and, okay. and really see that the technology is useful. And if you jump on YouTube, the boys have been kind enough to have done some aerial flyovers of Tent City, of the dairy. We really appreciate that. Zach Feeney is another co-founder of DMZ Aerial. And show the folks, this is as simple as it is. Yep, this is as simple as, as it is. Um, this is an example of our Inspire Ag system. Um, like Mitchell was saying, we take this up, fly it around, do general crop scouting, all the way up to more advanced types of imagery, NDVI type imagery, stitching imagery, mm -hmm. things like that. We're thrilled to have you guys here, but you are not limited geographically on people that want to see this. Yep, uh, right now we actually have systems in about 15 states. Um, we work a little bit in Canada as well. Most of that's in the Midwest, but we also work in California and Texas as well. Okay, and uh, how quick can we get a turnaround of information from what this shoots in the air? Very quick, um, as, as fast as, you know, 10, 15 minutes after flight, we can have a, a field stitched together and an NDVI for a farmer to use for a management decision. And so they can start talking about fertilizer, uh, pest attacks, uh, that type of thing within 15 minutes. Yep, yep, you can talk about all of that and then you can start making prescription maps and, and variable rate your fields. Excellent. Now these two fellows are from Prairie to Sac, so that gives you an idea of the young innovators that are here at Tent City and the new ideas they're bringing to Wisconsin Agriculture for the future. Coming up after the top of the hour, I'm going to keep my fingers crossed that Mother Nature gives us a little bit of sunshine or at least brighter skies, and we'll let the boys show you just how much this uh, uh, aerial unit can do for production agriculture. Like I said, when it comes to technology, this is exactly what will be catching farmers and visitors' attention here in Tent City. Show officially opens at 9 a.m. this morning. We're going to have all the families in uh, the family living tent for the grand opening ceremonies, and we'd love to see you here. And Charlotte and Adam, I'll have more from Tent City coming your way after 6 o'clock. Gosh, so much to see and do there, Pam. This is great. Thank you very much. It is the largest agriculture show in Wisconsin, and one of the largest in the nation. Wisconsin Farm Technology Days gets underway here shortly in the town of Sun Prairie. The farm babe, Pam Yonke, has been with us all morning. Talking about drones right now, Pam? Yep. We call them uh, unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, and that is going to be a hot topic of conversation here in Tent City. Uh, we were talking earlier this morning with the Feeney boys, and they're still with me. Uh, this technology has helped us organize the show. We're monitoring crops here at the Stotts Farms outside of Sun Prairie with uh, the UAVs, and pretty quick you're going to see it come into, into sight here. This is the technology that Wisconsin agriculture is looking forward to, not just today, but for the foreseeable 
future. Uh, let's talk a little bit, Zach, about uh, what information specifically you are generating for farms today. Yep, so we're doing various types of imagery. Um, the most common is visible light spectrum imagery, but we also do uh, multi-spectral with NDVI type imagery. We'll stitch images together, uh, create a map that's NDVI, and then we can basically make a prescription map off of that to do variable rate across the field. So basically you're talking about fertilizer, you're talking about yep. controlling insects. What about livestock? Have we tried this in livestock? Yep, we've uh, done some stuff in livestock. Most of that is out west where they have some bigger herds, um, but they do the same type of thing, except generally they're using thermal cameras um, rather than near infrared like we use. And is it just to track the animals or what do they use it for? Yep, so they're a lot of times looking to see if the animal's sick based on their temperature um, and, and some other things that are mostly based on temperature readings. And this is that sensitive that you you can tell temperature of an animal from how far up in the air? Um, generally, we're flying probably 50 to 75 feet uh, above cattle, um, and we're using a, a thermal camera, a FLIR type camera, to look at a temperature of the cattle. Yep. And again, I, I was asking earlier, I've got to believe that the farmers that see this are amazed. Yep, they, they really enjoy it. It's, it's a really cool technology. Um, we're young guys, it's fun for us, but it's also fun, you know, showing it to some of the older farmers and stuff. They love, they love seeing it. Mitch was saying you're staying true to agriculture, though, although there's a lot of applications for this type of technology. You guys are staying to agriculture. Yep, we've been in business for three or four years now, and we've been totally focused on agriculture. Um, we've, we've had a lot of inquiries on, on other applications, but really agriculture is our background, and that's kind of where we want to stick. I don't want to I don't want to step in front of you, but yeah. I got to step in front of you. Sure. So this looks like something that my nephew plays with. <laughs> Absolutely. So it's it's built off of commercial grade UAV platforms, basically commercially available products that we've modified in order to be used in agriculture. We call this the Inspire Ag. And the reason why we call that the backstory is basically inspiring youth to get into agriculture. We've got an average age of over 50 in the ag, ag sector. And why not have kids, you know, coming out and flying these systems and being pilots for them? Well, we've got joysticks in the cabs and tractors now. We yep. can autopilot them. It only makes sense this would be our next phase. Exactly. It's just like playing an Xbox video game or any other type of video game out there. So. Goodness, I'm <laughs> telling you, talk like I'm a dinosaur. But these are the young faces of Wisconsin agriculture, folks. You can take it back up if you want, Mitch. And the precision that they can get with this thing as far as where it'll go and how fast it'll go, absolutely amazing. So when you see that flying over a farm field or here in Tent City, it's not for entertainment, folks. It's all for information, education, and what we hope will be profitability for our Wisconsin farmers. You gotta come out. This show rotates around the state. It will not be in Dane County again for the foreseeable future. So please come out Tuesday through Thursday, nine until five today and tomorrow, nine until four on Thursday. And yes, I will be here for it all because I love it. Thanks boys. Thank you. Well, you are having a good old time out there, Pam. I am, <laughs> I <laughs> am. And as you can see, the weather, it's right. calm, it's good, come on out. All right, thank you, Pam. You may see more farm equipment out on the roads over the next couple of days. As Pat mentioned, Wisconsin Farm Tech Days begins today in Sun Prairie. It gives people a chance to experience all the new technology that's being used in the agriculture industry. Let's check in now once again with Q106 Farm Director Pam Yonke. And Pam was doing the, uh, the unmanned aerial vehicles, uh -huh. the UAVs, in the last half hour. What's going on now? Well, as far as farm equipment, Charlotte, there's not going to be much on the road. We've got it all in. It's taken the process of uh, about the past uh, week to 10 days to get everything assembled here at Tent City, but there shouldn't be too much farm equipment on the roads. We will have uh, trams that are taking people to field demonstrations, buses that are going down to the dairy here at Stotts Farms, so people can see this kind of a modern farming operation. Bob Whipperforth is along with us. He's our executive chair for the Dane County Farm Technology Committee. It, after how many years? It's almost hard to believe it's here. It was three years ago in July, uh, July of 2012, that we first start uh, sitting down as an organizational committee to start planning this event, and the time has just flown by. Honestly. And when we started this, there was nothing in the background. If you take a look at uh, what our background is here at Tent City, that is the focal point of Stotts Farms, uh, the dairy, and the uh, 22, what is it, 22 million gallon lagoon for the methane right. digest yeah it's 22 million gallon uh, capacity storage and it, i believe it's one of the largest ones in the state of wisconsin right and uh the family made that decision don't think that there were a lot of federal funds or anything like that necessarily engaged second one on this dairy uh 
I, what do you think about all this volunteerism, Bob, uh, and now that you're seeing everybody boots on the ground doing stuff? It's really one of the most rewarding aspects of the show. Uh, when we started three years ago, you would look into the whites of people's eyes and you could almost see the fear and <laughs> you know they would wonder whether they could really pull this off or not. <laughs> so to watch that leadership develop has just been you know overwhelming and watching people grow uh, among themselves and working together and getting along and they have good days and bad days, sure. but it's just been uh, a real pleasure to work with everybody. And remember folks, the official opening is at 9.30 this morning morning in the family living tent where you'll have a chance to meet the multi-generation of Stotzes that make this farm happen. We invite you to come on out. Uh, we've got more than 1,400 volunteers that have been involved in this show for at least the past year, some of us more than that, and we'd love to show it off for you today. Again, show officially opens at 9 till 5 today and tomorrow, 9 until 4 on Thursday. DaneCoFarmTech.com can give you more details. And like I said, Adam and Charlotte, it's been my pleasure to be a part of the volunteer committee for over the past three years' time, getting to work with guys like Bob. It is just, just fantastic to see it finally coming. I hope everybody stops out to take a look. Very cool. Hey, Pam, thanks for so much uh, for all your work this morning. We appreciate mm -hmm. it. My pleasure. Thanks for the time. We'll see you tomorrow.